Welcome to WandaVision Episode 7, Thoughts. Now, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. Also spoilers for the Fox X-Men movies leading up to this point, since it's possible that Quicksilver from those movies is the one we are now seeing on WandaVision. And I will also be discussing theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. And as usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by the Rockstars, Screen Rant, Nerdist, and Screen Crush. And let's see. Yeah, so this is the first episode where when Wanda wakes up and you know gets up in the morning, vision isn't there. You know, and it makes it makes sense that he is exactly where he was the last time we saw him, you know, but yeah, all the other episodes you know, we, we don't always see them wake up and get out of bed, but it's clear that Vision was, you know, Vision didn't come in after she woke up or something. And, yeah, it fits really well with this thing of, like, almost kind of separation. I, I mean, the kind of separation you have before divorce, that kind of, and how Wanda is kind of depressed and alone, lonely. And... The, the, yeah, the kids' games keep changing. I, I thought it was very, very nice little, you know, they can't fit in all the fun, nostalgic stuff without, some some of it has to be just flashing past, but they're sitting there, you know, I, I didn't, I don't recognize all of them. I haven't played all those, but, you know, others have pointed out, let's see, so it's a, it's a Wiimote, it's a, I want to see Sega Genesis, and maybe... NES or SNES, and finally just Uno cards, which, yeah, and, and you know, obviously, we don't know exactly if this is, like, is it Wanda's magic that's kind of freaking out, because I, I think that's most likely, you know, she is in this, you know, yeah, like, just, you know, similar to how during, during the, the pregnancy, you know, she, she, she's emotional, which once again, I don't, you know, that's not some kind of thing that only women, there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, because she has superpowers, you know, yeah, when, when you're very emotional, like the, the tiniest little thing can, can make it worse. And you kind of feel like you're, you're almost kind of losing control. And when you have reality warping magic, you know, again, it's it's a really great visualization of something that countless people, probably most people, at some point in their lives, you know, we've been really emotional and felt like, you know, everything was, yeah. And, let's see, and yeah, we see that Wanda was wearing the Halloween costume under, you know, when, when she went to bed, so... You know, she's, she's that, like, that's, that's, if you wake up and you're wearing, like, clothes that you, that, I mean, I don't personally care, you know, sleep in what you want, including nothing, you know, I think the only reason we should care about that is if, like, if there are other people in the bed that really would like you to, where some things, you know, you can arrange that with them. You can talk about what to, you know, other than that. Yeah. Now, but, but yeah, you know, it, Wanda tends to be fairly neat person. You know, we, as, as far as we've seen, she is someone who cares about her appearance, cares about what she's wearing. You know, we've never, before this episode, we've never really seen her just kind of disheveled and such. You know, and yeah, like basically when she went to bed, she was so sad or just done or something. You know, I don't get the sense that, for example, she was drunk. That's sometimes, you know, if you wake up in the clothes, in clothes you probably shouldn't be sleeping in. Sometimes it's because you were drunk, but yeah. And objects keep changing around the house. I like how the, the you know, she, she gets out the milk and like at one point, you know, one point it's a carton, at one point it's like a, a, you know, one of those old, 
milk, milk bottles from back when you had a milkman delivering milk to people's houses. And there's like a missing kid on the carton. So I guess, you know, after Halloween, maybe Wanda made the kids disappear again, maybe. Although, later in the episode, we do see some kids walking past Vision and Dr. Lewis in the, in the van, I guess it's called. And the opening titles have the word Wanda all over. Vision's name only appears at the very end, and it says the show was created created by Wanda Maximoff, which is a neat little thing. And one of the things went by really fast, and I, I wasn't quick enough to, like, pause. But, of course, someone else, you know, one of the one of the Easter egg videos, and they pointed out... I should have written down what it was they said, but there was something, like... Yeah. I mean, if you're watching this episode, I really hope you have actually watched the episode and you have access to the episode. You know, it's it's very close to the opening. What I want to say is, it was very creepy. And we're told that the signal from the show has gone. You know, we, the the viewer in the real world, can still see the, the sitcom, but the sword people outside of the force field can't. And... You know, we don't get a lot of details, but Hayward does say, make sure the team have everything they need. We launch today. And I can't help but wonder, if he's probably going to try to attack her again. You know, he... Last time a drone didn't quite work, so who knows what he's going to send this time. And just, yeah. And Vision wakes up near the border of the force field, and he looks exactly the same as he did in the Avengers uniform, instead of wearing normal clothes, like he has been, but he is still wearing the wedding ring. But but yeah, you know, this is the first episode where the first time we see Vision, he's wearing his Avengers uniform. Really loving Dr. Lewis inside of the force field. You know, she she's like an escape artist because she was handcuffed to the car you know that that's a really good I'm, I'm really glad they held off on that reveal and yes i understand you know some people were apparently disappointed that she wasn't playing her waitress character from two broke girls which would have been a very fun kind of that's not impossible i mean everybody's clothes is different from one episode to the next so it's possible that she'll look like a waitress and one of the last two episodes. Anyway, I haven't watched Two Broke Girls, but it is kind of neat. I mean, she, as far as I know, she is the only actress, you know, appearing on this show who has done sitcoms before. And, but, but yeah, you know, it's, it's a really fun, like, of course she becomes an escape artist and just the, you know, and, and Vision is trying to talk to her about you know, reality, and she's like, okay, you're really creepy, and it turns out she can leave. You know, I, I thought that was a good, like, I'm, I'm glad they held off on that reveal, that at first it just seemed like, yeah. And Wanda tells the kids Pietro is not their uncle, and they should not believe what he tells them. And, you know, I'd, they always do a great job on the sitcom style, but, yeah, again, the, the mockumentary sitcom style works really well. The, the you know, we'll, we'll have a, a short scene and then it cuts to the interview thing and just, you know, Wanda says, I, I don't know why things are changing around the house. Must be a case of the Monday. Am I right? Just, wow, that's, that's, yeah. And, you know, yeah, a couple of brief things that, let's see, there were, uh, let's see. Agnes says, in, in one of the interview things, Ralph says sometimes I sugarcoat things too much, but I can't just tell them that their mom is, is loony. That's kind of what she has been doing to Wanda. She's sugarcoating reality and trying to trying to ease her in to you know so yeah that's a that's a neat little yeah 
and Wanda tells the kids everything is meaningless and the just it it you know it it really fits well with you know like she's she's very sad right now she feels like just i mean it it has been some really you know she don't know she doesn't know where vision is and she feels like you know i mean i mean yeah she probably i think it's fair to say she probably does believe that vision is, pietro is not the kid's uncle is not her twin brother i mean it must be really traumatic to lose your twin then have your twin seemingly reappear and then realize that wasn't your twin she let that man babysit her kids she had that man sleep in her house you know i mean it's like she's maybe counting her lucky stars that he didn't like kidnap them or something and that is what does happen by the end of this episode agnes agatha harkness has kidnapped the kids so it's it's a good sort of little like that's you know we i don't think she says he could have kidnapped you but that is like that's what we think i mean holy crap if you know she let a stranger into her house trusted him like that so and and by the end of the you know and yeah because she's been trusting Agnes from the very first episode. You know, Agnes has been pushing herself on them. But right from the start, Wanda has listened to a lot of what she said. And done a lot of the things that she suggested Wanda should do. So, yeah, she's trusting the wrong people all over the place, basically. it's, And, and that is, and, and during Civil War, you know, Tony betrayed her trust in him. By just, you know, as she said, you locked me in my room. Let's see. And I probably shouldn't, but I did kind of find funny when, you know, Agnes is like, she's one split end from cutting her own bangs, and it's just, yeah, that's, uh, that's, unless you're 100% certain you know what you're doing, do not cut your own hair, it's not gonna, that's a, that's a bit of a trope, you know, it, and it happens in real life as well. Anyway, let's see, and, and the, I really like, you know, Agnes is like trying to say, you know, oh, let, go ahead and let me babysit. I promise I won't bite. I actually did bite a kid once. And it again, it is this sort of thing of like, that's legitimately a very funny joke. But by the end of the episode, we have confirmation. Agnes is Agatha Harkness. She is a witch. And witches have known to bite children every once in a while. I mean... Usually it's more than once, unless you can, like, unhinge your jaw and, and swallow them whole. But, you know, it's, it's, and, and when you just hear it, it is like, holy crap, lady, don't, don't bite kids. Don't, do not bite children. That is, that is not, don't bite anyone unless you're absolutely, like, if, if, like, your life depends on it or if your partner asks you to, otherwise, please don't bite anyone. This is honestly some of Ang's best material and best acting. She, you know, Catherine Han, I want to say the actress, she really nails this act. I mean, in general, they basically all do nail each of them, but this is, I don't know, there's just, there's a, there's a, she, she really, it works in, she's been one of the best right from the start. Oh, this is going to be a gas. You know, the whole just, yeah, all, all the, the while. Anyway, and stuff keeps morphing around Wanda, and she is able to transform it back, you know, like the TV and such, but it is still worrying that it's happening by itself. And she assures the camera that she's fine, like, seven times. This is fine. He's fine. It's fine. And Wu and Monica realized that Hayward was trying to weaponize Vision and nothing worked until 
Wanda and and that's why Hayward wants Vision back so that you know so so that internet theory did indeed pan out and I did see at least one you know person be like ah I, you know now that ah Doctor Lewis now that she's inside the force field that means we're not going to find out the information that she found fortunately that wasn't the case you know I guess she sent it to them yeah yeah that makes sense you know once she had the data she sent it to she she like I guess texted or emailed to and yeah <clears throat> so it doesn't really look like these guys are the Fantastic Four although I suppose it's possible some of them could end up becoming the Fantastic Four but you know it certainly right now they don't appear to be someone that you know that we know from the comics or from the MCU so that's too bad excuse me and vision keeps trying to talk to dr lewis and i like how i i don't even remember anymore what it was he said but he's like hey look over there and she you know turns away so, so that he can just get her to stand still for 2 seconds and he does the zzz thing and and she wakes up I really appreciate, you know, so they can have a conversation. I really appreciate that they didn't have, like, an entire episode where he can't have a conversation with her. And her constantly being, she's actually the first time he's woken someone up and left them woken up. And that, yeah, because it's the, the you know, we still don't know for sure exactly if, you know, Monica as Geraldine, if she kind of woke up when Wanda mentioned Pietro or if she was already woken up and was waiting for a chance to bring up something from the real world but the but but yeah you know the reason that Dr. Lewis can be woken up and doesn't freak out is the you know the, yeah at the end of this episode we know that Agnes was only pretending to to freak out but so yeah, I, I think I, I forget if I did say it or not, but I did wonder what would she what would Agnes gain by lying to Vision? And by the end of this episode, we still don't know what she gained. But this episode does I mean, we only do see a few, like, okay, she you know, we see that she was the one who put Senor Scratchy in the ah, was it the hat? I, I forget exactly, but during the magic show. She was the one who sent Pietro. I think there was at least one more. And she, you know, she turns to the camera and says, and I killed Sparky too. But, you know, we do, yeah, we specifically see that she was acting when talking to Vision in the car. So she must have been trying to get him to do something. And that's, yeah. So, so, but, but yeah. You know, other than that, Dr. Lewis is the only one to not freak out when Vision wakes them up. And the only, and, and as such, the only one that he doesn't immediately put back under w within just a few seconds of waking them up. And it is, of course, because Lewis already knows what's going on. And Wanda hasn't been forcing her to behave a certain way for very long. You know, I mean... The, the episode starts with Wanda and Vision waking up, and I think, I think Lewis, Dr. Lewis was already awake when Vision walked over, so I guess he might have been awake through the night, actually. That, I, I could imagine. I secretly wanted a guest spot on the show, but this sucks. And Dr. Lewis gets to partake in some of the violence that she missed out on when Wu and Monica knocked out the sword people. And it's also like, again, they, they manage this, this like tension. You know, that, that guy that keeps trying to get them to, like, you know, he thinks that, that Vision is like the new clown, which doesn't make sense. You know, he's, it's, his face is red, he's wearing a colorful costume, you know, it's, it's, it's and, and one of the Easter egg people pointed out, there's a there's a story where Hulk in in the comics where Hulk is hiding working in this circus thing and the people think that he's a robot because he's so big and strong early early strong 
you know, and the the so so now here we have an actual robot being being mistaken for yeah, I think it was uh, Dan. I'm sorry, from Nerdist, and he said that uh, you know he he realized that he said the words flesh and blood clown as if there's any other kind. But yeah, you know that's that's a really neat kind of parallel and yeah and vision starts asking Dr. Roos questions and she doesn't have answers for them which is a great little joke after you know he's like I have questions and she's like I have answers and then he starts asking questions and there are questions she can't answer yet and I I forget who it was but one of them pointed out or one of these three people pointed out she's basically the audience stand-in you know she's been watching the show and she, you know, she has answers to some questions, but there are some major questions that she still doesn't have the answers to. And the stork returns as everything around Wanda freaks out, and some of the wallpaper comes undone. So she is literally unraveling, coming apart at the seams. Very nice kind of visual metaphor. And we get another ad, and now it's about depression. And... And you know it's it's for the, the the product is called Nexus, and it's some sort of anti-depress antidepressant I think it's called you know some some sort of pill. And you know as, as some of these very people point out, Nexus is you know among other things refers to that Wanda is like an like all of the different multiverses. There's always a Wanda Maximoff. And another meaning of Nexus is that there are all these multiverses, and yeah, so, yeah, it really seems like by the end of this show, the, the multiverse will be somewhat accessible, at least to someone like Wanda and Doctor Strange. And, let's see, there was the, the thing of... It's interesting, this is the first time that it doesn't really correspond to something like pretty much all the other ones you could you could do, you know you could connect the ad to something in Wanda's past some some past trauma and i guess maybe it's referring to the trauma of losing vision at the end of infinity war but it's not the the other ones seem to more directly correlate. You know, you have Hydra multiple times, including one that, you know, the, the Hydra show says, un, you know, for the goddess within, which is what Hydra did. They unlocked the goddess within Wanda. You know, you have Strucker, and let's see, there was the... I feel like, oh, right, there was Lagos, where she accidentally got people killed because she wasn't quite careful enough with the the suicide bombing ah what's it called Sc crossbones not skull and bones and let's see then there was yeah and then yo magic which you know really seems like there, there are multiple different you know but but yeah one of them is using magic to keep vision alive or, or bring him back or something which but but the ah, yeah anyway but but yeah the nexus thing and it's also it's the f it's the first time that it's this really serious and uncomfortable subject in the ad like usually the the other ads there's like creepiness because there's there's double meaning there but all the others i mean at the end of the day oh oh right sorry the i forget i forgot one of the ads that's for the you know the Stark toaster which beeps like we know Stark missiles used to, which is how their parents died and how they almost they they thought they were gonna die there, and yeah so you know I mean the other products okay so we have a toaster a wristwatch, a bath soap thing, ah one second a a an absorbent like tissue paper thing, and then finally, um, a, uh, like a kid's snack product. I mean, okay, they're not really, but
but an antidepressant. And it does also fit with, I mean, this is like the 2000s episode, and yeah, you know, in the 2000s, antidepressant medication ads, you know, where, where some of the only, yeah, the older ones were for products sold and done in style that fit that decade. And, let's see. yeah, and, and, you know, it was, it was something like, you know, replace reality with the reality of your choice or something like that. And, you know, it's, it's something like, and, and it ends with the word something like, do not use Nexus unless your doctor has said that it that you're ready to move on with your life. Nexus, because the world doesn't revolve around you, or does it? And it's again this really neat, like it it is this, like the the show WandaVision does revolve around her. So that's one reality that that's one world that does revolve around her. But it's also this thing of like there's. There's this sort of, like, guilting, which I'm not sure that's an... Yeah, I, I think that's a... I, th I think that's one of the things where, it, it, with, with these ads and the sitcoms and such, the, the, a lot of the important stuff is stuff where it kind of diverges from what you would expect. And you, I don't think I've ever heard of an antidepressant ad that said something as, as kind of judgy, judgmental, as the world doesn't revolve around you. Just, you know, it, it, I, I figure it would... So, so yeah, I, I think that's, a, you know, an important part of the ad to, to note that there is this, this sort of, yeah. And, and yeah, if the, if the Nexus is referring to how there is always a Wanda, no matter which part of the multiverse, then, you know, you could argue that the world does revolve around her, so it's, it's yeah, just layers upon layers upon layers. It's, it's like an onion and an ogre had a beautiful cake baby together. Let's see. Now the, the, yes, so. I think that was all I had to say about the ad. And, yeah, Agnes sits down with the kids, and they're playing, let's see, Scratchy, and there's, it's, it's really great how, you know, the kid that can read mine says, I like it here. It's quiet. You're quiet, Agnes. On the inside, which is a great kind of, like, it's, it sounds like a, a, you know, how some people will say, you're beautiful on the inside, like, because, and that is, kind of, Agnes isn't super quiet in, in, like, she is a very chatty person, uh, you know, not judging people like that, but it's, it's a, yeah, before he says quiet on the inside, it's like, is she, though? Is she really? But it's, and, and, you know, others have pointed out, he, it's, it hasn't been quiet for him since last night, where he started being able to read everyone's thoughts in the town, and part of the reason why he feels it's so noisy is because there are two sets of thoughts inside all of the people in the suburban town, you know. So the, it, uh, let me think. It's the, yeah, you have the, you have the stuff they were thinking that they would be thinking if they weren't mind controlled by Wanda. And then you have the stuff Wanda or possibly Agatha Harkness is telling them to think so it fits with the sitcom reality and yeah, and yeah, and that means that the the fact that inside of Agnes's house it's quiet that must mean that her house is like it's, it's there's like an impenetrable bar impenetrable barrier for like the thoughts of the thoughts of other people can't go in there, which could also mean that Agatha, you know, Wanda can't catch her doing magic by picking up that she's thinking something magical when she's inside her own house, and, yeah, so, let's see, and, um, and, I'm sorry, I know other people have gotten around to, to picking up their names, 
it's going to be a while. The the Wiccan in the comics, his, ident his, his alter ego is called Wiccan, the kid that can read minds. Wiccan says that Agnes is quiet on the inside, which also tells us he can't read her thoughts, which actually, yeah, I guess that means that it's not necessary for her to be inside her own house to do man to anyway. That's why Wanda can't read her mind. You know, Gerald, sorry, Monica pointed out, Wanda, you're a telepath. You let me into your home. You must have known that I wasn't a threat. You know, and Agatha, you can't read her, which obviously if she's going to hide from a telepath, she needs something to prevent others from reading her thoughts. And, and you know, at least one of the Easter egg people said that by the end of the show, we probably will have Dr. Xavier and Professor Xavier, sorry, Dr. X, that's Action Man. Anyway, Professor Xavier. And, you know, he said that it's not that Wiccan is going to become Xavier, but the way Wiccan is talking about it, it sounds a lot like how Xavier perceives the world. And, yeah. And, and then Agnes tells them, you don't have to worry about your mom. She can do anything. She's super mom. I mean, partial credit, that's almost right. I mean, right now she's freaking out, but superpowers and all, you know. And it is also, again, it's a thing. To, you know, if you, if you want to reassure some kids about their parents, you might say, oh, they're like, they're like a, a super, you know, your dad is like super dad, your mom is like super mom. So, yeah. And Monica puts on a suit to protect her and gets in the vehicle that's protected. Let's see. And it's kind of sweet that Wu is legitimately concerned for Monica. It seems more than professional. He legitimately doesn't want her to get hurt. And vehicle is having trouble breaching the force field. And just the... I saw at least one person say that, you know, oh, there was so much buildup to this vehicle. And then it immediately failed. I would agree if Monica wasn't able to breach, but the, the point of the vehicle was to allow her to breach again, you know, and she breached it. And the, I, I think it's important that Monica didn't get back in there before this episode, because, you know, at the end of the episode, I, I don't know how much Pietro is going to slow her down, but if he still has super speed, you know, he might be able to do, we, we don't know the full extent of her powers yet, but he did get the drop on her. It's possible he'll slow her down. But, uh, yeah, the, certainly the, as soon as she can do anything, she found one of the entrances to the creepy basement, so she is going to try to help Wanda against Agatha. Although, you know, we don't know which of the two she's going to trust. I, um, I agree that she, Agatha seems very sinister at the end of this episode, but I can't help but wonder if there is something else going on. I, I don't know. The... the and, and others have said, she's probably still working for a greater evil entity. I think so. And, you know, others have pointed out, you know, she, she was like calling the, the bunny Senor Scratchy. And, the, you know, they, the, some, some people think that Pietro is actually Nicholas Scratch, Agatha's son from the comics. And, you know, maybe Ralph really is Mephisto. So Ralph is M Ralph is though. And, yeah, I, I am really, really psyched to see the next episode, as, as usual. Let's see. And, yeah, and, and you know, one of the, I, th I think it's Wu who asks about, you know, what, what happened to the, the vehicle. And one of the others said, the density is matching, you know, so... Yeah, and Monica won't give up. Still, Lieutenant Trouble. And let's see. Yeah, and and the yeah, someone says something. No, it's been rewritten. And then we see that the part of the vehicle that you know, went through, did change into a vehicle that fits the past, 
and then Monica runs at the force field, and we have this, you know, there's, we, we hear, you know, lines from the, from Captain Marvel, the solo movie, and, yeah, not the character, but the solo movie, although I think, was there one of Carol's lines in there? I, I forget, but, you know, certainly Nick and her mom and such, but, yeah, the, the, and there's a, there's a reference to 2001 A Space Odyssey, you know, and it's, you know, it temporarily seems, it seems like she's stuck in some sort of limbo temporarily, but she keeps fighting and she makes it and her eyes are bright blue, her vision has changed, so, yeah, it seems like she has her superpowers now, and I figured that was the only reason she could make it through anyway, so it's not, she's not going to get any backup from, you know, un unless something happens that completely changes, but let's see, then there was the, yeah, I guess that probably means Hayward can't get anything in there, the, like, if he sent another drone, it would probably not be able to, but the, let's see, because even the part that was, re that, that was changed to fit it still came out on the other, you know, on the outside of the force, as, as far as I recall, at least. Now, let's see, there was, and, and yeah, I, I have to admit, I don't know a ton about, let's just call her Photon, because that was her mother's, you know, what's it called? Um, that was the name she went by in the, in the jet. And it is, you know, she's had, like, what was it, five different identities in the comics. But it makes a lot of sense if she would go by Photon to honor her mother. But the, the, yeah, so Photon, I don't know a ton about her in the comics. But apparently this is similar to how she got her powers in the comics. She, she went through some sort of, I don't know if it was a force field, but, you know, yeah. And... So, so that I, I quite like. I, it's sufficiently distinct from what happened to Carol Danvers, but it is still this sort of, you know, technically both are related to an Infinity Stone. So, and, and, and Dr. Lewis tells Vision what, ha what happened at the end of Infinity War. I almost called him Wilson. I am not 100%. I, I have quite the headache. I did already take some pills for it, but still hurts. And yeah, the Lewis and Vision keep facing stuff to slow them down because Wanda wants them to take Vision home to her. And yeah, because let's see, if I understand it correctly, they are looking for the exit, so they're they're looking for the force field, but Wanda wants them to return. I I don't know. I now that I think, I'm not 100% certain. I quite like this change to the status quo that Vision isn't waking up with Wanda at the start of the episode, and it is also like this is the only time that he was literally. I think all the other episodes end with them both in their house. So, you know, it just, it follows logically that they sleep and then wake up together. So, and, and in this one, you know, you can't blame Vision for not being like rise and shine right after almost being pulled apart by the, the force field. So. And Dr. Lewis tells Vision that, you know, from watching the show for the past week, you know, their love is real. And she says, you belong together. And Wanda tries to throw out Monica again, but realizes that Monica has superpowers. And And, and Monica says, don't let him make you the villain, friend Hayward. And Monica relates to Wanda because she lost her mom, so they both lost someone. And Agnes gets Wanda away from Monica because Monica might screw up Agatha's plan. That, you know, she was also worried 
about what Monica slash Geraldine, how, you know, what effect she was going to have on Wanda in episode three. And yeah, and, and Vision and Doctor Who still being slowed down. And, and Vision kind of, you know, the episode is called Breaking the Fourth Wall, and there is a lot of fourth wall breaking in this episode. And Vision literally, you know, he's sitting there, like, doing the, the interview thing, and he's like, what am I doing here, sitting to you when I should, you know, what was this? I, I should, you know, I, I need to get back to my wife, so, something like that. And, and he removes the, the microphone that they put on him, and just, yeah. And then he flies out of the, the top of the vehicle, and Darcy's like, so I'll just meet you there then? Which is classic Darcy. Look at you, all muscly. How space? Meow meow? That's meow meow. And sinister music plays as Wanda wanders where her kids are now that they're out of vision, out of her sight. And, you know, she briefly looks at the rabbit and, you know, focuses on, you know, which, you know, Senior Scratchy, if that is, if that is his real name, if that is referring to the, the, uh, Mr. Scratch, I think, is the, is the, well, that's his father, you can just call him. Anyway, the, which is apparently like the name, one of the names for the devil, and, you know, she looks at, I and others thought it was a fly, and you know some of the Easter egg people thought it was a fly. Others said that it must be like, that it's like a moth. I want to say, but you know, I yeah, I, it's probably it probably is a moth. I th I think that is right, but it just you know I don't know. Some people are better at recognizing insects. I I don't know exactly. Is is that a good thing or a bad thing? But anyway, the the yeah. You know, it is this, like, ah, what's the word? Like, um, if it's a fly, then it goes with how Lord of the Flies. And you know, one of the, one of these right people compared it to the Amityville horror, which I, yeah, that's, that's very true. And if it's a moth, then, you know, moths are like, Crap, I don't, I'm sorry. I, you're just gonna have to watch those Easter egg videos. I forget exactly what they said the moth is supposed to mean, but, yeah. And, yeah, I think they, one of them said something like, you know, it's, it's like, change, like, um, becoming a butterfly or something, you know. And, that is, you know, things are changing, someone is changing, and, you know, if the, you know, I, I did say last week, I think whoever it is is going to make their move on the kids very soon because the kids have their powers now. That must be what whoever is behind it was waiting for. You know, once they have their powers, they, you know, they can be used for whatever exactly it is. You know, that's, I mean, if it doesn't matter whether or not they have powers, for one thing, then does it even matter if they're Wanda's kids? And for another, you know, just yeah, I th I think it's important the fact that they were able to eventually get powers, and the fact that you know I don't think Agnes could really have made her move in the last episode, but now you know it it is this like hypothetically it actually Pietro might have been. Like, he's encouraging them to misbehave, and suddenly they get their power. So maybe that was, like, you know, he's he's basically, with him, they do things that Wanda would say they're too young to do, or that they're not allowed to do. And with that, they start using their power. They start being able to use their powers. So maybe Pietro, maybe that was his job, you know, and, I mean... It's not impossible that Agnes could have done it, but I th yeah, I think it is, you know, I, th I think that was Pietro's job. And, you know, by the end of this episode, it seems like he's he's there to keep snoopers who be snooping from snooping. 
and yeah so the the let's see which i mean i don't think he is referring to snoop dog but certainly that is something that you know depending on which decade you catch snoop dog in he's doing very different things so yeah by 2000s i mean today he's like doing ads for fast food i don't know if he was doing that in the 2000s anyway the the yeah i think it was important that pietro was the one to help make sure they get their powers and another thing is if agnes was with them when they got their powers then presumably she would make her move then instead of waiting but yeah yeah i mean if yeah if since we know that Agnes was pretending to be messed up near the edge of the, you know, near Ellis Avenue, near the, the, the border of the, of the force field, that made Vision even more suspicious about the force field. So it's possible that Agatha wanted him to go out of the force field and become, you know, be take, excuse me, be taken apart. It's possible that it was, excuse me, something to force Wiccan's powers to become powerful enough that he could tell that Vision was in trouble. Since that is something, you know, yeah, I, th I think that's probably it, honestly. I think that's what Agatha wanted. But it does also seem to help her plan that by the end of the previous episode, Vision was not back home. And for this entire episode, does not reach Wanda. And yeah, actually, you know, that's another thing. When, as soon as Vision reaches the house, unless, I mean, okay, yeah, he might not realize that she's with Agnes, but certainly, you know, Agatha is the next door neighbor. So if, hypothetically, if he goes and like knocks and says, do you know where Wanda is? Then that's going to be a problem for her. So yeah, there's definitely room for, yeah. Now, let's see. And, you know, yeah, Wanda's, where, where are my kids? They're probably just playing in the basement, and that's, yeah, incredibly creepy basement. Let's see. And, yeah, you know, skulls, a tome of magic. And I, th I think it's what it's called, you know, Book of Magic, Grimoire, one of the, you know, that, that's also a word I would use. One of the Easter egg people used that. And let's see, there was one or two other things. But yeah, I do think it is interesting. She does not actually see the kids unless those are their skulls. But, and, you know, Agnes joins Wanda in the basement and uses telekinesis and strokes the rabbit. And it's... This thing, you know, in the comics, she has a cat as a familiar, but it's possible that that was changed into a rabbit here. And the cat can apparently grow to giant size, and it's possible that so can the bunny. The, the name is Agatha Harkness. Lovely to finally meet you, dear. And that's, yeah. And we see that Agnes sent Pietro, and she's behind everything, and the show becomes... Agatha all along. I, I really, I, I love the, that title. I love that theme tune, the, the opening sequence. And I can't help but wonder if the next episode is straight up going to open with that. You know, one of the Easter egg people said, I, I haven't watched The Monsters, but apparently it's very The Monsters of an intro. And I, I love how, you know, the, the title Agatha all along, you know, for one thing, you have alliteration. All three words start with the letter A. Okay, follow me here. The second letter, you know, going left to right, the second letter of the first word is a G. The first letter going right to left of the last word is a G. So you have the, the sort of, you know, it, it, it more than rhymes. It really goes, yeah, and all, you know, two of the, one second. In, yeah, in addition to all three words starting with the letter A, they, you know, the letter A is in all of them, 
the, the letter A is how all of them start, and in fact with Agatha, it both starts and ends. And let's see, the and it's it's one of those things, you know, all along both have A L. I already mentioned that Agatha and Along both have G's. And it's this thing of there's there's uh, there's one more thing, let's see. What was it that I was doing? Right, right. Uh, all of them have at least at least one at least one vowel and at least two consonants and you know words in English tend to have at least one vowel I'll you know so I'll grant that that's not necessarily a huge deal um there there aren't very many words that don't in in the English language there are some in other languages but I'm not sure I offhand can think of a word in English that anyway so what was the let's see what was the other thing mm. yeah actually yeah that, that might have been it and yeah you see she's the one conducting the interviews and I killed Sparky too wow and that's of course the end of the episode so we really don't know where the kids are and what happened to them. And we have our first post credit scene. And I I hope nobody missed that because it's the first time, you know, I mean, this was episode seven out of nine episodes. I figure that a lot of people probably guessed that by now, okay, there's just not going to be post credit scenes on this show, unlike the movies, you know, almost all of the movies have at least one post credit scene, but, yeah. And, yeah, Monica is looking for one, and she finds an entrance to the basement, which is now glowing with the purple magic that Agatha is using, and Pietro catches her, very creepy. So, Agatha Harton seems like a very sinister presence. She doesn't try to talk to Wanda, at least at first. We, you know, at, at least as far as we see here. She tries to get her with magic and trickery. And let's see. But then again, I see I'm I'm trying to not because the show has gotten me. Several of the misdirects have gotten me so far. So, you know, when when Vision woke her up and she apparently wasn't part of it, I actually I I I may, you know, I still thought that she was important and she was doing something, but I thought that it was part of the sitcom world, where now, in the, you know, in the title scene, we see that she's, I, th I think she's doing her makeup or something when Vision is right there and, and she's in the car, you know, which, also don't, that's not, don't, don't do your makeup in the car, unless, un, un, I don't know, I mean, I get, okay, okay, if, you have stopped your car and you're very close to the edge of a potentially impenetrable magical barrier, then it's maybe safe. But don't do it while, like, traffic is. Anyway, the, the, yeah, so, let's see. The, the, yeah, so, I thought that that meant that Agnes wasn't evil, you know, like, magical outside of the sitcom world. So I'm um, I'm careful not to just completely go along with the it might be another misdirect. Hypothetically, if I was gonna try to talk Wanda into something on this show, I might also approach with magic. She I forget exactly what she does, but I think she like holds Wanda in place or something. Or there's a you know, yeah. So if she's going to try to talk Wanda into something, and it's something that might disturb Wanda, it might be a good idea to get her at least slightly restrained, at least at first. So I'm, I'm not 100% certain that it is, but yeah. Let's see. I like that although Monica has superpowers, she wasn't trying to use them against Wanda. She uses them to protect herself. You know, so that, like, you know, Wanda throws her 
I forget if she also intentionally dropped her or she just put her in the air and then Monica uses her magic for Wanda to drop. Like, I th yeah, I think maybe she, like, pushes away the telekinesis that Wanda was using. And then she does, uh, you know, three-point superhero landing. She didn't threaten Wanda, verbally or otherwise. She she kind of confronted her. She was she was confrontational, similar to Vision at the end of episode five, I want to say. But it wasn't like you know this is this is where a lot of in a lot of cases there would be a, a super powered people fight, you know, because clearly both of them have superpowers and are now able to I I don't know the exact extent and and yeah you know, I, I don't know all the things we we don't know yet all the things Photon can do but clearly you know she I mean in in the let's see in the comics she can become like energy like any kind of any frequency of energy and something and that's how she got she got through the barrier by matching the energy or or something like that and that yeah you know and and she can make sure that she lands in a in a way that doesn't hurt her and she can apparently break free i think she was the one who broke free of the telekinesis i don't think wanda intentionally let her fall like that but yeah <clears throat> excuse me and wanda is and you know yeah so once again you know, I've already gone chronologically through. This is stuff that I realized later and added. But, you know, Wanda is asked by the interviewer and immediately points out he's not supposed to be asked questions. The question asked is, do you think you deserve this? Which, you know, once we know the interviewer is Agnes, it's another instance of her emotionally manipulating Wanda, which she has, of course, been doing since the very start of the show. Like, the very first scene, she starts emotionally manipulating Wanda. But it also, you know, and and at the start of the show, it seemed like relatively benign. You know, okay, she's telling Wanda that, you know, she that her husband should be really attractive to her. You know, so seduce your husband. So, you know, but in you know, it also fits with how depressed Wanda is in this episode. A lot of people who are depressed feel like they deserve their pain and. In case someone listening to this is depressed or anxious or has any mental health issues at all, no, you don't deserve it. No one deserves mental health issues. And those were all of my prepared notes. Let's see if there's anything I can whip off the top of my head. So, you know, Photon now has her powers and she is going to be in Captain Marvel 2, so I figure and it's still possible that on this show we might find out exactly why she's kind of touchy about Carol Danvers, but otherwise yeah, and, and you know, so they have their powers at least the, yeah, and I think Ms. Marvel Kamala Khan, Khan obviously has to spend, well in the MCU, it's so far it seems like she's the only Ms. Marvel, but there are multiple Ms. Marvels in the comics. But Kamala Khan, she almost definitely has her powers before the end of her miniseries, and so we have three Ms. Marvels in one movie, th or three Captains Marvel. Yeah, it must be, yeah, Captains Marvel, not Captain Marvels, because it's yeah, the the Captains Marvels. No, I think Captains Marvel. And, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I don't like telling people what to think. But I don't really understand people who say that this was a filler episode. We got a superhero origin. We have the, you know, Agatha finally made her move on the kids. You know, before this episode, she didn't directly, she, she kind of hinted that maybe Wanda should become pregnant. And once she has the kids, she doesn't seem to mind that they're growing up really quickly. But she doesn't, you know, she's not directly doing something that seems like, 
okay, this is the thing that's really gonna, you know, she's, she's kind of gently guiding Wanda and Vision in a certain direction. But this was when she made her move. This is a big deal. You know, of course we're not going to find out exactly what, you know, what happens at the end of the episode. This is, this is how the show works. You know, a big thing will happen near the end of an episode. There will be a big reveal, perhaps. But something dramatic will happen near the end of an episode, and then the episode ends. And we maybe get some follow-up on the thing that happened in one of the later episodes, but, you know, yeah, I... I we really shouldn't be surprised by this point that it's that the reveal of Agatha Harkness is a cliffhanger rather than something that happens earlier in an episode. And yeah, I really I, f I felt like it made a lot of sense with the, you know, <sighs> okay, so this is where I lose a lot of the audience. I don't think I've watched any mockumentary sitcom. Yes, I know I should have watched The Office. I know. Don't you don't have to tell me. But I think those are a bit more cynical of sitcoms, you know, where, I mean, obviously, you know, the, if we want to get all the way back to, like, really upbeat, happy sitcoms, uh, you know, optimistic, kind of idealistic sitcoms, we have to go all the way back to the first two episodes, you know, the 50s and 60s, although the 70s didn't have a lot of, like, really, ah, what's the word? Yeah, you know, 70s and 80s wasn't, hugely dark either but it was a little bit more serious and you know the 90s episode was somewhat kind of cynical and you know there's this sort of kind of immature energy like adolescent rebellious energy and then this episode you know we're so far into the cynical that Wanda tells her kids to their faces Life is meaningless. Everything is meaningless. You know, we have an ad for antidepressant. We have, you know, they, they are essentially separated. You know, the technically it's not that Vision was trying to get away from Wanda as such, but they are physically separated and they are separated as in on the way to a divorce. You know, it, that's that's the feel of the... And, and again, I, I think... I think Dr. Lewis and Vision were trying to get a, in, not get away from Wanda as such, but drive, excuse me, in a direction that would put more distance between Vision and Wanda so that they could get to the force field. I forget exactly what they were going to do there, but I, I, the, the way I read it was that they were trying to get, but then... But then I'm not sure if Vision was... No, he said, yeah, he said, I have to get back to my wife. That must, for, for sure, by then, he is... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not 100% certain. Maybe they were already always trying to get back to the wife. But then why... Uh, I guess maybe it's like a she-needs-space kind of thing. If And I, I saw, I want to say, Red Devilosa say that maybe it was Agnes who was slowing them down, which... Yeah, if they were trying to get home to Wanda, then I think Agnes was the one uh, slowing them down. But, let's see, the, but, but yeah, you know, you have this thing of, like, the, the, yeah, it's, it's, it is very cynical, it is very kind of life, life sucks kind of thing, and I think that is the idea with, with The Office, I think, like, isn't, like, the boss character, like, this real jerk that no one can really stand, but they have to put up with him because they can't, you know, if they try to get another job, that's going to suck too. So it really, it makes a lot of sense that the, yeah, you know. And it is, like, this, this the tone of this episode is hugely different from just the episode last week, you know, the Halloween episode, which, you know, there's, I mean, every single episode has some creepiness and some kind of, reality shining through a little bit at least but the last episode you know last week's episode was like fun and poppy and like strong colors and like energetic and like this kind of yeah you know that 
Like, they're going out and getting candy. They're even stealing candy from other kids. Which, you know, both means that they have more candy than they would otherwise, and it means they get to, like, upset children, which I'm not going to claim that I understand that, but that is a thing, you know, sometimes kids like to upset other kids, you know, so there is this. And then in this, I mean, literally, Wanda can just barely get anything done, you know. I We've seen her in bed before, but this is the first time it was like, Please don't get me out of bed. Please don't make me get out of bed. Which was also, that was also in the ad. You know, it's like she's in bed and she just can't do anything kind of thing. And the, let's see, then there was the thing with the, yeah, and the kids actually, you know, that's, that's, it's generally not that great of a thing if the kids have to wake the their mother up. That's like, ideally, she's, she, you know, I don't know, maybe not always, but it can be a really bad sign, you know, and and she's even like, I'm, I'm not sleeping, I'm just resting my eyes, and they're like, maybe, I, I forget exactly what they say, but then she says, resting my eyes, you know, and just, she, she can barely get out of bed, which is one of the, you know, that's, it's not only ever a thing that happens to depressed people, but it is something that happens to depressed people, and then there was the, one second, there was at least one other thing, which was, yeah, right, right, you know, then she, she, you know, she gets up and she makes breakfast, and it, again, there's this thing that, like, nothing is going right, because the, the, the milk and the, everything is changing around her, and then she sits down to watch TV, and things are changing around her, and she, you know, she changes it back, but it is still, like, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, yeah, there's, a, she's, she's very depressed, and it, it works really well as the, yeah, the, the, I, I, oh, I really can't praise this show enough. It's, it's incredible how well they've done at this kind of gradual, you know, every, every single episode has an at least slightly different tone. You know, the very first episode, you know, there's some tension with the, the boss and, uh, you know, the, yeah, both, both when Vision is at work and when they're trying to, you know, serve him dinner and, and all this stuff. And then the second episode, it's the, the, it's the magic show where things are like, going wrong and and vision is acting drunk and such third episode you have the whole pregnancy culminating in them in the babies being delivered and you know skipping the fourth episode since that's you know the it's it's mostly focused on sword then we have the, let's see that brings us to episode five which was the 80s one where yeah you know they've had the babies and they're trying to deal with having children and the, it's this like teachable moment a very special episode kind of thing of trying to you know kids are not going to behave exactly the way you want kind of thing and you know Agnes specifically says kids you can't control them and let's see, then there's the thing of the, let me think, there was this one. Right, and yeah, then you have the, the Halloween episode, which I already discussed, and then this episode, it's, yeah, very, very impressive. And okay, so I guess the next episode's going to be the 2010s, and I am not 100% sure how the, I couldn't offhand tell you what the difference is between 2000s and 2010s sitcoms. And I mean, can they even do, uh, like if episode 9, can that be a 2020 sit? Are there already 2020? You know, this sitcoms of this decade, and are they markedly different than of the last decade? I, I don't know. Anyway. I think that is absolutely everything that I had to say, and yeah, it, it is, 
I am, I am really stoked to see. I, I, you know, there are so many different options. There are so many possibilities for what, you know, what has happened to the kids, and how exactly, you know, what it, what exactly is going to happen between Agatha and Wanda, and Pietro and. I mean, I guess we can't call him Pietro anymore, can we? Um, Evan Peters. What's that? What's going to happen to Evan Peters and Photon? And, yeah. I think that is... Take a break. Uh, yeah, I'm just briefly going to say, I agree that it, you know, the... It wasn't... It wasn't... The Fantastic Four, it wasn't, I, I forget exactly, there was some other possibility for who the aerospace engineer that Monica was like, someone's going to, you know, I know someone who's going to love working on this thing. But I, I feel like they could do, like, similar to how the first time we saw Barf, there were people who were like, Mysterio, right? That's, that's going to be, you know, and it was like, what, two years? Three years, I guess. And then we had it confirmed, yes, that was Mysterious Technology. I could imagine it might be something like that, where, you know, maybe by the end of this, you know, this miniseries, we're going to realize that the Fantastic Four were working, did help make that vehicle. And maybe they're like, okay, next time we got to do it a little better, because in the comics they make one, I think it can even fly, and it can traverse the multiverse safely. So that's obviously something that's going to be a big deal if the, you know, yeah, I guess if the Fantastic Four aren't showing up until their own movie, but there's probably going to be multiverse stuff in that still, you know, I mean, I forget if it's confirmed or just a theory, but it might be that multiverse is going to be the big new thing now that the Infinity Saga is over, you know, I mean... Technically, not every single movie had an Infinity Stone in it, but they did all lead into the Infinity Saga, you know, right from Phase 1, right, you know, even, even in the very first, you know, Iron Man, we're told that in the post credit scene that the Avengers are going to be around, and it's not a huge leap from Avengers to Infinity, you know, it's, and, and, and then we find out that the, you know, at the end of Avengers, we find out that Thanos was behind it, and then obviously, you know, Infinity, yeah, Infinity Gauntlet, that's one of the biggest, Infinity War, I forget exactly what it's called in the comics, but, you know, that's one of the biggest stories featuring Thanos and the Avengers, so it's, it's very logical to, yeah. So, yeah, you know, it's very likely that, you know, and, uh, let me think, was, see, I'm not 100% certain if I think this is the start of Phase Four, I think Spider-Man: Far From Home was the end of Phase Three. I don't think Endgame was the very end of Phase Three, but I could be wrong. But even if Spider-Man: Far From Home was Phase Four, they mentioned the multiverse, they tease towards it, but it isn't. And, and Endgame also establishes that you know time travel can create multiple dimensions. So it is you know. Yeah, the multiverse is going to be the next big thing, and the Fantastic Four vehicle that can traverse it safely, it would make a lot of sense for that one to show up. Maybe it'll be, maybe only later we'll find out that it was built by the Fantastic Four. Again, like how we didn't know right away if Mysterio built Barf, but we're told later that he did. I could imagine it would be something like that. Like, the... You know, the, the person that Monica talked to, I forget, L Lieutenant Good or something, maybe later in, in the Fantastic Four we'll see Lieutenant Good working with the Fantastic Four, you know, and, yeah, somewhat similar to how, you know, at the end of Captain America the Winter Soldier, we see Kobe Smulders, Marie Hill, that's her name, joining, you know, starting to work for Stark Industries, which is, of course, why she's working with the Avengers in Age of Ultron, even though they're not working for S.H.I.E.L.D. But then, 
I don't know, midway through the movie, we see that Nick Fury is still around, and, you know, Tony deduces Maria Hill was always working for you, wasn't she? So I could imagine it's something like that, that we're going to find out that the Fantastic Four, probably before getting their powers, helped make the... Yeah, because I figure if they had their powers, they would probably show up and try to help out with their superpowers, which... You know, that is, again, like, I guess, well, let's see, Nick Fury, no, wait, yeah, Nick Fury is off, he's, he's off in the sword place, so I guess, yeah, I guess, I'm not sure who exactly they would contact to find out, I guess technically Wu could have tried contacting Scott Lang. Since he also does have some experience, well, you know, not the multiverse, but the quantum realm. But, but then again, I guess Wu doesn't know that. And hypothetically, I guess Wu technically doesn't even know that Scott still does the whole Ant-Man thing. Because by the end of that movie, he wasn't certain by the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp if Scott did was still Ant-Man, but he certainly couldn't prove it, so... That helps explain that, but yeah, yeah, I believe that was absolutely everything I wanted to say. So yeah, as usual, incredibly psyched for the next episode. I, I, I do, I don't want to jinx it, but I am, I don't know if they're going to be able to wrap up everything in the last two episodes because there's a lot of answers that need questioning other way around Un unless it's jeopardy rules of course but yeah i i can't help but that's that's really like i'm not really worried because this show has done everything to like if this episode was a person then every episode in addition to being you know great in all the ways I've already talked about how it's great in these videos it would be like a person I trusted reassuring me we got this you're you're gonna be very satisfied by the end of okay that sounded bad you're gonna you're gonna be when this is over you're gonna feel like it you know ev everything was su successfully wrapped up you know, no really awkward loose ends or, you know, things that really didn't pan out or thing, you know, such. So, yeah. And, you know, obviously there is the thing of, you know, a mystery is always more interesting than the answer, no matter how good the answer is, because the mystery really gets our attention. But it's, I've, I've been incredibly happy with how they've, you know, they've managed to answer a lot of questions. They managed to... I mean, it's... I guess, essentially, something that if... If a piece of storytelling... If, if the storytelling in a piece of fiction is good, then you're happy by the end of the story that you didn't just read a Wikipedia summary of the plot. You know, it did something more than just tell you we we got from a to, from point a to point b and character number one went through an arc and ended up at the end of that arc you know there is something more it it gets to you it makes you feel things you know and yeah the mcu has done really well at that and this show has done really well at that and yeah, I am I am really excited to see where the yeah. Still really difficult to wait an entire week before another episode, but yeah. So I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoy watching recording, and I'll catch you next time.